Malware, known as malicious software, is a malicious code designed to function in ways harm to the user. The main sign of the computer might be infected by malware are slowing the device. It changes your home page or redirects it to other web pages. Now you can see some examples. A virus is software created to damage system. Worms infects the Mac computer via a network and makes the computer very slow. Spyware are programs that collect information from your computer without your knowledge. Adware is software that creates pop-ups and on your screen without your permission. Trojan Horse When software runs, it allows the entrance of other malware into your system. When it comes to cybersecurity, there are three main goals that should be covered. These are confidentiality, integrity and availability. We can categorize types of attacks under these security goals. Now we are going to talk about these attacks types in details. It is an act of stealing information stored on a computer, server or other device from an unknown victim. Hackers often attack mobile devices to get dynamic information and static information. Dynamic information includes the phone's location, its power usage and other data. Static information includes that cellular devices store and send over the network. The blue snapping and blue bugging attacks are examples of theft of data. The blue bugging attack permits unauthorized access to the phone and listening to the phone call from the victim's phone. However, this attack has progressed to be able to manipulate the various functions of the phone. Blue snapping attack is unauthorized access and data retrieval from applications. Some malware attempts to use the victim's phone resources. If you have a cell phone and use Gmail, Yahoo, iCloud, Dropbox or any other social network account and also bank account, you are at risk of being hacked, having your money stolen, having sensitive information exposed and being blackmailed. With just your phone number and a little bit of what is called social engineering in which a hacker doesn't necessarily need technical knowledge but just to convince the customer service rep that they are you. A maliciously ancient person can break into all the above accounts and more. However, hijacking phone resources is not unexpected. A denial of service attack is a security event that occurs when an attacker takes action to prevent legitimate users from accessing targeted systems. Those attacks typically flood servers in order to overwhelm the victim resources and make it difficult or impossible for legitimate users to use them. While an attack, it crashes the system. It can be often dealt with successfully by simply rebooting the system. Flooding attacks can be more difficult to recover from. Many of those attacks such as ping of death and tier of attacks Exploit limitations in the TCP IP protocol. For all known DOS attacks, there are software fixes that system administrators can install to limit the damage caused by the attacks. But, like viruses, new DOS attacks are constantly being drilled up by hackers. It is extremely easy to crash most Bluetooth applications on mobile devices by sending repeated pieces of information corrupted packets and incorrect file format. However, this is a major attack type that may be exploited from known vulnerabilities. Now we are going to talk about some threats on mobile devices. These are malicious software targeting mobile devices. They cause system collapse and leakage of confidential information by means of Bluetooth, SMS, MMS and wireless LAN. There are numerous attack vectors. Malware is one of main threats on mobile devices. This type of attack steals personal data from mobile devices and damages the devices. We focus main for attacks. They are SMS attacks, Bluetooth attacks, phone jailbreaking and premium rate attacks. In SMS attacks, an attacker can advertise and disseminate phishing links that can be used to exploit vulnerabilities. In Bluetooth attacks, 
and attacker can steal victim's data and track the mobile location. With blue bugging, an attacker can launch malicious software and listen to conversations. With jailbreaking, an attacker can remove the effect on the security of the operating system. It allows to install applications without additional signatures on the operating system. The premium rate service can deliver valuable content to the mobile devices. When used in a legitimate way, users can receive financial information, technical support or adult services. These services cost a few money per message or minute. Spyware is another threat on mobile devices. It is installed on a computer without the knowledge of the owner in order to collect the owner's private information. Spyware is often hidden from the user in order to gather information about internet interaction, keystrokes, passwords and other valuable data. Spyware can also negatively affect computers or mobile devices performance by installing additional software, redirecting web browser searches, changing computer settings, reducing connection speed, changing the home page or even completely disrupting network connection ability. Spyware can also be used as a type of adware. Grayware refers to applications that have annoying, undesirable or undisclosed behavior but do not fall into any of the major threat categories. Most probably, Graveware collects the data from mobile devices for marketing purposes. Their intent is not to harm users but to both of them. Often Graveware performs a variety of undesired actions such as irritating users with pop-up windows, tracking user habits and unnecessarily exposing computer vulnerabilities to attack. Now we are gonna take a look back to the history of attacks. Looking at the history of attacks, many Trojan horses, worms and viruses have entered the mobile world and are being influenced. This has been happening for a long time. Many variants of these malware stroke the attack and reveal unexpected and unexpected levels of exposure. Before internet access became widespread, spreading these attacks were not much easy. Motivation is one of the most important key characteristics that differentiate threat actors. The figure shows some of the motivations of threat actors. State-based entities generally try to gain strategy advantage, but it often targets intellectual property rights. The financial goal of an organized criminal makes it easy to understand its motivation. It tends to focus on large credit cards, banking transactions or personally identifiable information. Hacktivists are probably the hardest to stop as internal data can affect the reputation of the organization. This timeline highlights some of the means and most destructive malware for five years. Before internet access became widespread, viruses spread on personal computers by infecting root sectors of floppy disks. The first well-known worm was the Internet Worm of 1988 which infected Sun OS and Wax BSD systems. Unlike a virus, this worm did not insert itself into other programs. Instead, it exploited security holes in network and started itself running as a separate process. With the rise of the Microsoft Windows platform, it became possible to write malicious code in the macro language of Microsoft Word and similar programs. In 21st century, at the start of the new millennium, internet and email worms were making headlines across the globe. The majority of security breaches in recent years have been easily detectable. They were sophisticated with planning, targeting, stalking and run. Since the popularity of Android OS, the possibility of being vulnerable is at higher level. Approaches in malware detection There are three methods of Malware detection, static analysis, dynamic analysis, integrity checking. Malware needs to be analyzed to understand the risk associated with malware. In order to clarify the behavior and the function of malware, many detection methods exist in the literature. In recent years, interest in malicious code detection technology often by devices has increased.
three main approaches were considered. Malware needs to be analyzed to understand the risk associated with malwares. In order to clarify the behavior and the function of malware, many detection methods exist in the literature. In recent years, interest in malicious code detection technology of mobile devices has increased. There are three main approaches to be considered. Static analysis. Static analysis investigates download app by inspecting its software properties and source code. However, software embedded obfuscation and encryption technology makes static analysis difficult. Static analysis is further divided into two categories, signature-based detection and behavior-based detection. If we talk about signature-based detection, it refers to detecting attacks by searching for specific patterns, such as by sequence of network traffic or non-malicious instruction sequence used by malware. This term comes from antivirus software and refers to detected patterns as signatures. Signature detection has the advantage of detecting malware behavior before the system infects malicious code. Behavior-based detection. This is another general technique that looks for abnormal behavior based on the operation checker resistant in memory. In this case, the use is alerted. Behavior checkers have the disadvantage that some changes have been made to the system before malicious activity is detected. Dynamic analysis. Dynamic analysis runs the application in the different environment and tracks its execution behavior. Dynamic analysis can be used to reveal the natural behavior of malware when the executed code is analyzed. Therefore, it is not affected by obfuscation attempt. Integrity checking. Integrity checking is a technology to keep or a lock of all files existing in the system. The log may contain characteristics of files such as file size, timestamp, checksum, and etc. Each time the integrity checker runs and the files on the system are checked and compared with previously saved characteristics. We're gonna talk about malware analyzing. In general terms, uh, there are two methods of malware analysis dynamic and static. During dynamic malware analysis, one is expected to check the behavior of the application or the malware as it is being executed on the system. Uh, the most of the times, the use of the virtual machine or I mean the device or a sandbox is used for this method. The analyst will simply run the application and look on system and the network logs analyzing the behavior of the malware as it is executed. On the other hand, during static analysis, one has to break apart the application or the malware using reverse engineering tools and techniques in order to recreate the actual code and the algorithm that the program was created. Both methods have pros and cons, and choosing one is based solely on the analysis decision and experience. In most cases, dynamic analysis will achieve faster results than the static analysis. Even though some things can be missed in dynamic analysis and easily get spotted on static. When we go through some technical level, there are some tools to analyze malware. First one is Droidbox, the Android SDK, and Android Audit tools. These are dynamic malware analysis methods, and there are some static malware analysis methods also. First one, Mobile Sandbox, IDA Pro. APK Inspector, Dex to Jar, JD, GUI, JAD, Dex Dump, Smail. Here are some malware detection methods that our review came with. D. Van Gopal has identified a method of representing signatures for detecting viruses in mobile devices. It uses the hash table to store hash values of virus signature for fast machine. 
This method was 98% faster than the sequential scan. New malware, which completely different from the previous malware, cannot be detected. To improve the detection, this method needs to be combined with more sophisticated malware detection methods, such as heuristic scanning and detection. As the virus involved, the technology to protect the virus had to evolve. For behavioral-based malware detection, it works in a way of representing the malware behavior and it discovers the application's actions logical order to do that. For malicious behavior is distinguished from normal behavior by training the SVM and the system is evaluated with an accuracy of 96% for both real-world and pseudo-mobile malware. So, these smartphones are becoming increasingly popular in terms of power, sensors and communication. Modern smartphones offer many services such as messaging, internet browsing, email transaction, games and so on. In addition to traditional voice services, because of its multifunctionality, new security threats are emerging in mobile devices. This presentation is a review of malicious code detection techniques for mobile devices. Additionally, the history of mobile threats and vulnerabilities as well as current threats and vulnerabilities against mobile devices have been discussed in this. Problems related to traditional signature-based detection methods are also highlighted. Various mobile malware detection methods were described. This paper provides sufficient literature for the researchers on the mobile malware detection methods and hope that it will motivate the researchers to examine the mobile security issues and its application. Thank you.